Hi, this is Precalculus, section 1.6, Graphs of Functions, and we're going to be looking at the following items. Number one, we have the domain and range of graphs, and we want to use interval notation for that. You should be used to that by now, but we'll try to clean that up. Two, symmetry. Symmetry about the y-axis, which we call an even function, and symmetry about the origin, which we call an odd function. This one would be rotational 180 degrees. Then increasing, decreasing, or constant functions. Local maximums and local minimums, which in calculus we call relative extrema. And then also global maximums and global minimums, which we also call absolute extrema. Okay, So that's what we're going to be trying to deal with today. Now, if we look at some of these things, we want to look at the domain and range. Some of you can do this, but some of you have trouble when you look at a graph to determine what the domain and range are. So if we want to find the domain of this function here, well, look at the x values that I can plug in. And these arrows are indicators that this will go on forever. So when I see that and I don't see any holes, I don't see any asymptotes or anything, then my domain, are, it's going to be all reals. If I do this in interval notation, however, I'm going to go from negative infinity to infinity. And in interval notation with the round brackets means that we do not include that value. Yeah, we can't include it, uh, infinity or negative infinity. And so we use round brackets about, around both of those. Then if we look at our range, the range is where the uh, y values are where this function, and well, the y values that take up for this function. So if I look at this, the y values kind of go in between here. This isn't perfect, but my low water mark is just below here, and my high water mark is just about there. I missed a little bit, but I think you get the idea. So my y values that this takes on, it looks like it goes down to 2 and goes all the way up to 4. Now the question is, does it include 2 and 4? Well, it is solid, and it is solid. So I'm going to put a square bracket, and this will go 2 to 4. That's my range. Hopefully that's clear. Looking at this next one, if we do domain and range, our domain for this one, well, if I look at the x values, this does not have the arrows anymore, so it's starting at a specific value. It's starting, look, it looks like it starts at negative 2. Question is, do I put a round bracket or a square bracket? Well, it does not include that negative 2 because I have the hole in the graph. On your note sheet, it might not be as clear, but here's the hole. And so it does not include the negative 2, so I put a round bracket. However, on this other side, it does include 2, so I put a square bracket. Okay, inclusive square bracket, not inclusive round bracket. Then our range, well, what va y values does this function take on? or give to it. So if it looks like we go from down here, negative 4, all the way up to 8. That would be my y values. So negative 4 to 8. Then once again, figuring out the brackets, this one does not include negative 4, so it's going to be round. And then it does include 8, so it's going to be square. So that would tell me my domain and range for that particular function. Graphically, I hope that helps a little bit, but um, sometimes I just like to take my pen and just see where does it sweep out and where do we see this function for the y values. That would be the range. Okay, increasing and decreasing functions. Increasing A function is increasing on an interval if for any x1 and x2 in the interval, x1 is less than x2. That means that the x value to the left of another x value implies then that the y value will also be less than the, the further y value to the right. So as we go from left to right, this means that I have a point here. This would be x1, and this would be f of x1. As I go on further, x2 is here, to the right someplace. And then the f of x2 is greater than f of x1. So I'm going to be f of x2 up here. I missed a little bit, but that is my point. It has to be increasing. And so this is for some interval. You could call it the interval i or whatever, but the interval, that's what's happening. Now for decreasing, it's very similar. x1 is less than x2, yes, but the first value, y value, is higher or bigger than the second y value. That will mean that I'm decreasing. You can draw a similar picture to this one here if you want, and you'd be decreasing.
And then it's constant if those two y values are always the same. So let's look what we got here. We want to state where this, inter, uh, where this function is increasing and decreasing, and then we also want to figure out what the maxes and mins are. I think some of you have done that before, so we'll try to do it, and then we'll give you the definition. So increasing means reading left to right. As I read from left to right, I'm increasing from this value up to this value. Okay? And in fact, if I find this, this is what we call a local maximum. Because in and around that area, it's the highest point. It's the top of the hill. This one is what we call a local minimum. It's the bottom of the valley. Okay? Those points will separate out our increasing and decreasing if we have a, a somewhat continuous function here. So where am I increasing? I'm starting at, oh, round bracket, because it's not there, so negative 2. And with increasing and decreasing, some books say to include this point, some don't. I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to let you do whichever way you want. I'm going to not include it, but that's the way I do it. And so this goes up to 1. So these are the x intervals where I am increasing. And I'm making this nicer. Okay, so negative 2 to 1 x values. It's not the y values, but the x values. Okay, where else is it increasing? Well, it looks like it's increasing also from 1 to 2. Okay, once again, if you put square brackets in there, I'm, I'm going to disregard them either way you can put it. Decreasing then would be this part, reading left to right, I'm decreasing here. What's happening in my stock price right now? Oh, it's going down. Okay, so that's decreasing, and that would be from negative 1 up to 1. Constant, not constant. Okay, so it's either increasing or decreasing. Some people might say that at the top of the hill it's constant for that instant. We're not going to go there. Okay, then a minimum. The uh, local minimum is going to be right here at x equal to 1. That is not the minimum value, however. At x equal to 1, our minimum value is going to be, looks like, negative 1. So negative 1 is our minimum value. It's the y value. How low did your stock price go? Uh-oh, negative 1. That's not nice. Okay. The maximum then would occur, or a relative maximum would occur here at negative 1. At x equal to negative 1, and I should put at. We have a max of, looks like 5. Okay. What about this point out here? Is that a maximum? Well, when you get to calculus, some textbooks say yes, some say no. When I'm talking about local maximums, right now we're going to call it a maximum too. So uh, if we do call it a local maximum at x equal to 2, yeah, it's a high point. My stock price is very high. Then my max is 8. Okay? And so what happens with this is that the maximum value, if they're asking for the maximum value, it's the 8. Where does it occur? x equal to 2. There's a big distinguishing between that. Okay? So these are all what we call local minimums. Okay? Or I'm sorry, local extrema. This is a local minimum because in and around this area, the lowest point, the lowest part of the value is, uh, va valley is negative 1. The highest part of the top here would be 5, and so that's a relative maximum. So both of these are what we call relative. Now, are they absolute? Well, what's the highest that my stock price went to? Oh, 8. That would be what we call my absolute max. So this would be my absolute max. It could be a relative max too, but we also call it an absolute maximum. What's the highest on this interval? Now, what's my absolute minimum? Well, you're probably thinking, oh, what is that? Is that negative 4? Well, in all honesty, there is no absolute maximum, or no absolute minimum. Because if you tell me that it's negative 3.9, I go, well, here it was negative 3.99. If you tell me it's negative 3.99, I'm going to tell you that it's negative 3.9999. For any value that you get close to negative 4 here with, and I'm talking y values, I can find one that would be closer or one that would be less than the value that we're talking about. So this one does not have an absolute minimum. I hope that 
I hope you can grasp that. That's a little bit weird. Okay, the second one, we don't have a graph, so let's draw one. Ah, not that pretty, but we'll go with it. Okay, so I have this swoop down, and then it raises to its top at zero. That should hit two there. Use the integer values I tried to. And then it hits zero here at oh, x equal to one, and then goes up here at x equal to two. So where is it increasing? You can probably write this down for yourself. Try it. Okay, I'm going to go from negative one to zero. That's where it's increasing. And then also from one to two. Now, what's weird about this a little bit, this, these are x values. So we might say that x is an element of uh, these sets. I don't know if that's proper notation or not, but it is the x values. So when we write these intervals, yes, it's where the x values occur. Okay, then where is it decreasing? Well, I see from here, let's pretend that that would be negative 2. To negative 1, it'd be decreasing, and then also from 0 to 1. Those would be the intervals where it's decreasing. Okay, I sh probably should either put a comma in here or else I could put the union of where it's decreasing. I don't know if union is appropriate either because it's two separate decreasing amounts. So maybe let's just put a comma. Okay, so it's decreasing in those two different intervals for each one. Increasing, decreasing, you got it, okay? Is it constant? No, I don't have a constant. If I did have a constant, maybe it'd be like this. So constant, I would have from 2 to infinity. If I put the little arrow there. Okay, so that's where it might be constant. Now what about a min? And I'm talking about relative mins. I only see one place where I have a relative min. That would be at, at x equal to negative 1. The minimum value is my y value. What's that, about a third? I'm going to guess about a third. You can make a more accurate judgment by yourself. Then if I have any relative maximums, it looks like at 0. At x equal to 0, the max is 2. I didn't quite hit 2 there, but that's what I'm talking about. Okay. Both of these are relative. Do I have any other relative maxes? Yeah, sure. It looks like I have one at 2. So at x equal to 2, the max looks like it's about 2.25. Something like that. And in fact, are all other values less than, or what does this say now? Let's pause and check this out. I said we check out the definition, so let's check it out. With that straight line, do we have a local maximum? Well, if you look at right here, the point, if we take a point AB, which is that uh, point that we were just looking at, 2, 2, point, 2 comma 2.25. F of A is greater than or equal to all other F of, F of X. Well, if it's a constant function after that, this equal sign takes care of me. So yes, this point here is going to be a relative max because this Y value is greater than or equal to everything else around it. And in fact, it's going to be the absolute max because it's what we have on this, on this interval or on this picture. Okay? So this one would be a relative max, 2.25. This one also turns out to be the absolute max. Do we have absolute min? Well, once again, the discussion here, no, we don't, because we, don't, we can never find out what this minimum value is. We can get closer and closer to zero, but we never get there. OK, this one, this one's increasing. Some people say that it stops here. Well, for any value that's beyond it, any x value, I, I am still higher. And anything before it, I'm lower than I go higher. So I don't know if you know my point here exactly, but yes, we could flatten off here. But regardless, a point before is less, the y value is less than what we have here. So it means that I increased in that interval. Afterwards, it's going to be a y value that's greater. So it did increase again. So for increasing, this would be for all reals from negative infinity to infinity. Decreasing, nil, constant, nil. Any minimums? No, negative infinity is not a minimum. 
Any maximums? No. There are no maximums either. I need to find the specific values. My stock price is going towards infinity. I like that. Okay, so I talked a little about, bit about these. Relative extreme is in and around that area. You get the top of the hill or the bottom of the valley. Absolute extrema is on that interval or if, you know, for, if it's defined for all x. What is the highest value overall or what's the lowest value overall? Absolute, there will only be one of them for each one of these. Relative extrema, there might be many, 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 many for each one of these. Okay. Okay, then symmetry. We want to go through the symmetry of a graph. If we have symmetry about the y-axis, then that means that f of negative x is equal to f of x. You may have seen this before, and this is what we call an even function. If we have symmetry about the origin, which means that we can rotate it 180 degrees onto itself about the origin, then f of negative x is equal to negative f of x. This is called an odd function. I apologize, this video is getting a little long, so I'm just going to fill in this chart and show it to you, copy it down, and then I'll get to the examples at the end. I might explain it a little bit. Okay, the graphical attributes. We have y-axis symmetry for even functions. So for instance, y equals x squared, absolute value of x. And I can also include a constant with these. They can bump it up and down. For odd functions, the graphical attributes means I can spin it 180 degrees onto itself. So I can take this function and spin it, and then this piece would match up with this piece. I don't know if you can picture that or not, but put your finger right there, spin it around. Does it land on top of itself? y equal to x is another example. How about this one? Well, I can't put my finger here onto the curve, but like if this was a transparency or something, I put my finger there and spun it around, this curve would fit right over this curve. Spin 180 degrees, 180 degrees onto itself. That would definitely work. Okay, then the next one, if I have polynomials. Polynomials, if they have all even degree to exponents, Yes, you are going to have an even function. And then also if you have a constant here, like I said here, that works too. This is the definition, or this is what we use for it. F of negative x is equal to f of x. Why is that? Well, if I take a and I plug it into an even function, I get out b. If I take the opposite of a, I'm also going to get b. So no matter if I plug in a or the opposite of a, I'm always going to get the same y values. And that's what this, say, this is saying. If I plug in negative x, I'm going to get out the same y value as if I plug in positive x. If it's an odd degree po um, polynomial, that means that all the degrees are odd, then it is an odd function too. Also, it doesn't have to be polynomials. It could be other things though too. But if f of negative x is equal to negative f of x, then we also have a, an odd function. So if I take a and I get out b, well, if I take out the opposite of a, I'm going to get the opposite of b back out. So they're going to be opposites of each other. Then if we want to prove, to prove these things, takes a little bit to get going, okay? So what I'm going to do is I'm going to pause here and I'm going to start a new video. So take a breath, take a break, and then uh, I'll come back and just prove these things when you get a moment.